Okay, so now I've got this. I've let it dry a little bit so I can work with it a little bit more. And so I look at certain things like right over here, how very uneven it is, or in the handle, there's a lot of roughness, even around the rim. And so now's my time to go ahead and really perfect it. You know, I've been able to work with it when it was very wet and form it, do some initial work with it, work with it when it was leather dry, when I was able to do a lot of the carving. But now that it's really dry, I'll be able to do a little bit of sanding, a little bit of work with the wooden tools, and a little work with the uh, carving tools, all to just make it you know, that much better, just to bring up the level of perfection a little bit more. Okay, so I've been working at this for a little bit now, and you'll notice that it is much more uniform and much more even than it was. Uh, just a few things. So for instance, with this here, I just made sure that I had my hand very stable, maybe even stabling it on something, like using another tool, for instance, so that it's really steady. And then I was just going round and round and round as I was carving into it. Okay, same thing at the top, just getting that, holding it very stable, and going like that. Another thing that I did is that anytime you have a hard line, it becomes very uh, obvious if it's not absolutely perfect. So I've softened my lines a little bit, just sanding there a little bit there. With the uh, all the edges here, all the flat surfaces, I should say, here I just put it on the paper and I would just go up and down like that. And that was a broad enough surface that when I was done, it's pretty, pretty smooth. The rim right here, um, I gotta watch because you see the thinner it gets the more you get little chip outs like this and so at a certain point I have to decide at first I was just trimming it down to where that little chip out is but I'm not going to trim down any more and so if I get a little chip like this I'll do something to fill it in and that's the nice thing about clay is we can do that you know you can't do that if you're carving stone or anything else but with clay you could put a little piece in there Anyways, and one of the things I did to get this room absolutely flat is I did use a broad piece of sandpaper. And so if I have something like this available, you can ask me and we can just do that. And ever so gently, remember, you want to do it in a circular motion like this, not back and forth, because if you go back and forth, you're almost guaranteed to chip out things. Okay, and that's got it nice and flat. Alrighty. So on the inside, what I did is, for part of the way, I could just get my hand in there because the mugs are big. But my hand couldn't reach all the way down to the bottom. So what I did is I just taped a little piece of uh, sandpaper to one of these sticks. And that allowed me to get in here and sand it down nice and smooth. The handle and whatnot, that's obvious. That's just sanding, so forth and so on. Finally, looking at the, the bottom here, what I want to do is I want to put this on something else, like one of these plates, for instance, so that it's not rubbing against this table, because that's going to make things um, a lot more difficult. It might, like I say, it might chip out the, the rim here. Already I'm having some problems with that, but, you know, I'll just fill those in. But I want to make a little bit of a footer. Now, we didn't add a footer to this one because in all the work that we're going to do with it, it would probably get smashed down anyways. So instead, I'm just going to carve a little footer. And you no know, footers don't have to be super deep, so that's okay. So one thing is I did, is I just found something that was round. Here's a label from a tape. And I checked my bottom. And if I needed to trim it just a little bit, sand it a little bit to make it rounder, well, that's what I did. Okay, so knowing that this was pretty round, what I could do then is I could just take a tool like, well, first thing I did was, knowing that this was round, I fit a piece of a roll of tape to it, and I traced the inside here, and that got me this initial line. But in carving it, what I did was, I took this curved tool right here, and like I was saying before, knowing that this is round, I could just gauge my finger right to here. So let's see, this is how I did it. Uh, something like this here. So I've got my finger resting here, my tool here. And that way, if I just keep that straight, it's going to be round. 
and even with the edge. Once I get it even with the edge right there, then I could just carve out the middle here. Actually, I'm going to take these scraps. I've got another plate that I'm putting the scraps on to keep this clean because I want to really protect this rim because once again, that's super fragile now. But you want that rim to be thin. You see how thin that, that rim is? Because otherwise, it's not going to be pourable. It's not going to be drinkable. It will basically be useless if you don't put a nice thin rim on it. Okay, so in here, now all I'd have to do is go ahead and carve this out. I think what I would do is probably just go in sections. So I'm going to carve out straight across here. Maybe this way here. And getting this area to a certain depth, right? And that way I know where it's at. So that's not too bad there. Once again here, and I'll dump those off. And maybe even, I could just go back and forth like that. And pretty soon, all I'm gonna have are small pieces like this that I could carve out. I can even go a little bit further. See how that's just disappearing? until I get a nice smooth area under here. Okay, so there we have a footer that's deep enough to make a difference, but not too deep, right? Because you don't want to make it so deep that you go through or even weaken it. Now, finally, one thing that I haven't been showing too much lately, but is so important, is that you put your mark on it. So, here we go. Full name, since I can fit it. And, very important, your period number. Okay, so good enough. About the only thing left to do is maybe put a little bit of clay right here. And what I would do for that, we'll keep it simple, is... I'll just take a little touch of water right here, just moisten up that area a little bit. And I could either just sort of rub that in, or I'll bet you if I get a little bit of extra clay, see right there from my scraps, because I just need a little bit. I was kind of pushing that into place, smoothing it out. Shaping it. And there we go. Problem solved. Okay, well, good luck with this one. I hope that you do a nice job. Uh, the kids usually really like this project. And in fact, when uh, they have a chance to do something on their own, oftentimes this is one of the ones that they'll choose.